So, ladies and gentlemen, I am back with another video. This time, though, I'm not speaking about my weight loss vlogs. It is about Star Wars. We are back on topic, and we've got some drip feed information through about the Ahsoka series that's coming up uh, in August. And these images that have been released yesterday by Empire have caused a lot of speculation. Specifically, one image, which I'll pull up in a minute, uh, that is of an Inquisitor. And... I'll be honest, I saw the Inquisitor in the trailer. I think even back then, I said that looks an awful lot like the Eighth Brother. And upon seeing the image, my opinion is still holding to that. Um, it is the Eighth Brother. The helmet is very similar. Um, the, the outfit is much better looking than the Inquisitors in the Kenobi series. But you can see that there's a few things that, you know, will put a dent in the theory. Mostly that... He seems to have, you know, five-fingered hands, whereas the eighth brother in Rebels didn't. He was a little bit more alien, but we never really see, you know, what kind of an alien. And it's not beyond, you know, Disney, Lucasfilm to make these kinds of aesthetic changes to uh, the characters in a conversion from live action, uh, you know, and animation. So it does, the helmet looks very much like the eighth brother's. Now, there's been a lot of speculation, and one of the bits of speculation really, really got me thinking about, you know, the the clamour for characters that have existed in Legends and in other forms of media that have never been seen on TV or in the movies. And it's really, for me, setting people up for disappointments. You know what Star Wars Twitter is like? At the best of times, there is always... Something to argue about, something to criticise, something to hate. And at this point, I think that the people who are claiming that this character could be Starkiller, I appreciate the fact that Starkiller is a very popular figure in the Star Wars Twitterverse and in, you know, Star Wars in general. Um, and he's a very fun character, you know, when you play those games. The Force Unleashed is one of the most fun experiences that I've had playing any kind of a Star Wars game. You know, you are pretty much at the peak of a, of a, a Force user's power. And, you know, you get to go and blow up a lot of stuff, kill loads of people. You know, it's kind of like living Star Wars theories, you know, most epic Star Wars dream. And, you know, that's fun in a video game because, you know, video games, they're not really to be taken too seriously. Um, you know, to say that they're not really canon is an understatement. You know, one of my favourite Star Wars games is Shadows of the Empire. Dash Rendar, outside of the uh, really fun kind of uh, cosmetics that we got in Jedi Survivor uh, for his, you know, outfit, he's not a canon character. Those events didn't happen in canon. And I know to a lot of people, canon doesn't necessarily matter, and that's fine. Have your own canon. Absolutely no problem with that. The problem I think people are going to have is that they are not going to be happy either way. If this character turns out to be Starkiller, they're not going to be happy because they would have seen this as being a perfect opportunity missed by Dave Filoni and those in charge of the Ahsoka series. And they're going to complain and whine that it's not as good as Starkiller because they want this character to be OP. You know, they want it to be the person who is in the video games. And that's the exact same reason why if it does turn out to be Starkiller, they are going to hate it. Because this cannot ever be the Starkiller in the games. Because the Starkiller in the games is stupid. Starkiller is a stupid concept. And that one that would never work in, you know, the Star Wars universe that we've established in... I want to say... I'm going to say canon to mean everything that's been presented as being the established universe on TV and in the movies, and to some extent in the novels um, and animation as well. Now, what you simply cannot have here is an Inquisitor that is more powerful than Ahsoka, um, or even being an apprentice of Darth Vader. Darth Vader having an apprentice was one of the aspects of The Force Unleashed that I didn't necessarily like because it's very much out of step. And especially with the Inquisitors being a thing now, it's even more out of step than it was before. And so just from that premise alone, Starkiller cannot be the Starkiller of the games. 
And we know that when you change something about a character that people have already got in their heads, who they love and adore, that immediately sets off all of those negative sirens. People will flood to Twitter and they will say, this is a waste. This isn't the star killer that, you know, was in the game. This is terrible. This is Disney just, you know, watering down, you know, star killer. And it's like, well, yes, that's exactly the point. You cannot have star killer from the games because he is massively overpowered. You know, it's like if you were to take the, all those events as said, he beat Luke Skywalker. You know, it's like that's just not possible. Um, you know, I mean, it's possible in a non-canon world, but in the universe that we have established, it's not possible. So people are going to hate it because he's inevitably going to be defeated by Ahsoka. He's not going to be anywhere near as powerful. And, you know, we're going to end up back at square one, which is hate being spewed out online, people not being happy, people always saying that, you know, this, this and that is terrible, not what I foresaw. So, you know, I, I think the people who want this to be Starkiller are just setting themselves up for disappointments. Now, as for the other theories, people are saying it could be Barris Offie, which I guess, I, I mean, it's very strange that, you know, she would have disappeared for 20 odd years, 25 years after the end of the Clone Wars, because we don't see or hear from her at all after that point. Um, why did she become an Inquisitor in the first place? She was very much a complicated character in that she she wasn't she wasn't Sith. She wasn't evil. She didn't she didn't fully go to the dark side. She she fell out of love with the Jedi Order. She saw the Jedi Order for what it really was: arrogance, prideful. She saw the downfall, and you know that kind of leads people to that dark side. And that's that's where I think you know the uh, characters of Shin uh, is kind of going. You know those kind of dark side Jedi. Maybe, you know, they are not full dark side users. They are more former Jedi that became, um, you know, out of step with the Jedi Order um, and have, you know, gone on to use the dark side for, you know, their own purposes. But they're not Sith. Another is Ezra. Uh, another theory is that it could be Ezra who has been either corrupted or has lost his memory and is being controlled by Thrawn. I don't think I would like that because even if Ezra lost his memory, I don't like the idea that he is uh, just so easily able to fall to the dark side. And Thrawn really doesn't know enough about the Force to corrupt him in that manner. You know, Darth Sidious absolutely could corrupt someone because he knows how the Force works. He knows exactly how to manipulate that to make people want to use the dark side. But Thrawn is very much, uh, he's hes a tactician. You know, he is someone that, yes, he can manipulate and read people. But a Jedi, I, even one that's lost his memory, I just can't quite buy into that. Um, so, you know, again, I, I think the, the whole theory of it being Ezra just doesn't really play for me. I still think the most likely and maybe the most boring theory that people will find is that it is the eighth brother. I mean, let's face it, how many times have people survived falls from great heights? We've seen it so many times. Jedi Force users can land very easily from a great height. And so why wouldn't he have been able to? Uh, you know, he wasn't mortally wounded. You know, his lightsaber broke. And so it makes the most sense. It looks like the character. Disney is well known to change characteristics of, um, you know, certain you know, characters, um, if they are being translated from animation to live action. So that, for me, remains the most likely theory and the theory I'd probably be most comfortable with. If they want to make a new character, sure, that's fine. But really, I don't think this Inquisitor is going to be around for long. I think the Inquisitor's maybe going to be one or two episodes because, you know, it, ju it, it just, for me, it kind of smells of temporary villain for Ahsoka's defeat to kind of let us establish the power base that she's currently at. Because we know that Ahsoka can easily handle an Inquisitor based off of the Rebels series. But a lot of people who won't have watched Rebels won't know that. So we need something to show Ahsoka's power, um, you know, based off of another Force user. Because yeah, we got to see her fight in The Mandalorian Season 2. But she was up against a non-Force user. And, you know, again... She kind of handily defeated her. So people maybe who aren't too familiar with the character won't know the power levels. But if we put an Inquisitor in there, who we've seen in Kenobi, 
Uh, so we get an idea as to what their kind of challenge rating is. If you want to use a D&D &D term, we'll get an idea as to how powerful a soaker is. And so that's, I think, all the character is there for. And so it makes sense just to make it a throwaway character and not a Starkiller, not a Barisofi, not an Ezra, because that just doesn't make sense. And I think that no matter what, people are always going to find a reason not to like it. No matter who it turns out to be, people will not be happy. Um, and it is just a case of people just need to take a step back, think about it, and just, you know, maybe kind of realize that all those characters that we love from legends all those characters that we love from the video games that's where they thrive that's where they exist and if they are to be translated into live action it's not going to be the thing that you expect and so for me it's a big no-no on star killer and it's a big no-no on most of those other theories but only time will tell in the meantime let me know what you guys think it's going to be uh, how do you think Starkiller would translate? Do you agree? Or do you think that they could make a Starkiller work in the current sort of format? Let me know. In the meantime, we'll keep an eye out for more stuff. Thank you for watching. See you soon.